Okay, guys. So we are going to work on a mason jar tumbler tonight. Um, I'm going to do a sunset theme. I think it's going to be really cute. Uh, it is the 4th of July, and everybody is outdoors shooting fireworks. And I'm just trying to see some fireworks in my bank account. So <laughs> we're working right now. So ignore those in the background. Um, I have a second cup here. It is going to be what one of my cups that is called Golden Beaches. So this is actually the first step is a glittered base. And I will go over how to do that. So you might actually get a trooper in this one. We will see. It depends on how this turns out. So first we have this um, mason jar tumbler. It's been cleaned with warm dishwater and Dawn. We wiped it down with alcohol ink. I'm sorry, not alcohol ink. Uh, rubbing alcohol. And we taped off the edge with tape. You can use electrical tape. The little blue painter's tape. It doesn't matter what kind. You just want to um, tape off that edge so that the epoxy doesn't get up in the thread and the lid won't go on it. And then for the Golden Beaches, we have a stainless steel washed and wiped with alcohol the same way. Um, we use spray adhesive for the glue. You can also use Mod Podge and then we just dump the glitter over it. And then we sealed it with this Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear Enamel Sealer. Um, we can get that Lowe's, Meyer, Home Depot, whatever. And we did two layers of that so that when you touch it, no glitter comes off on your hands. So we're going to mix our epoxy. I have my part A and part B. We have equal parts. Um, always 50-50 mix on that. If not, your cup will be sticky and you will have to strip it. So make sure you take the extra time to measure it correctly. So I'm going to mix my part A into my part B. I'm going to scrape the bottom really good. And you want to mix it up until it's clear and there's no hazy strings in it. Scraping along the bottom and the sides. I put my little finger condoms on because I got about 500 of them so we're still trying to use those up. I can't wait for the gloves to come though because they are terrible. We have like a whole bag of these. See, see what happens when you order late night stuff on Amazon? Drunk crafting ordering should not be a thing but you know it happens. So, always wear some sort of gloves to protect you because a poppy uh, is not good for you and it's very hard to get off. So, I've let my epoxy sit for a minute. It's got some bubbles, but it's okay. We're going to work those out. So I'm going to go ahead and get my printer going. Adjust my plastic wrap because I'm going to take the Um, I'm going to start with the glass one. For the mason jar, I have that epoxy that we just mixed up. I'm going to mix a little bit of, I call it bling glitter. It's just um, recollection glitter from Michael's. It's like three bucks. Probably get it cheaper with the coupon. So you just mix that straight into your epoxy. You can use whatever color, whatever texture you like. I just dump it right in there, give it a good stir, and then we're going to go ahead and pour it on that jar and work it around. Bring it right up to that tape line.
and wait for it to come back around. One of these days I'm going to upgrade to one of the ones that are just like a long flat one where they just rotate and then I just move down the line. One of these days. When I talk my wife into a she shed called Kaya's Glitter Shack or something. So I'm just making sure that I'm getting all the sides. My glitter is not too clumped up in one space. It'll move around a little bit with the heat, but not too much. So, you know, make sure that it's well spread out. Okay, so we've got the glitter all on that one. It's all even. I like where it is. I feel like I've touched it a lot and that <laughs> means it's done. Okay, I promise I'm done this way. Okay, so we're going to let that zip for a minute. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to zip down here to the Golden Beaches. And I'm going to go ahead and put its epoxy layer on too. Okay, so we've got our glitter base layer on our mason jar. So now we're going to add our alcohol inks. And I think for this one, I'm going to do the sunset colors. So I'm going to use orange, and I've got a pink and a yellow. And I might use a little bit of gold. If I can find it. Here it is, Grace. And I've got to mix up a little bit of white. That's going to be our contrasting color. It's going to help our colors pop on this cup. Although, since it's a mason jar, I don't think we'll have too much of a problem. So, I'm going to go ahead and start dropping the pink first. And you just kind of want to drop it on there and stagger it a little bit and then we're going to go back in with another color. That pink sometimes can be a little overwhelming but you know with the orange and the yellow we'll see. I think it'll Can you just put a little drop down there? And just let it run once we apply the heat. It'll all mix together in a really pretty way. And they're so easy to do, guys. Like, they look gorgeous. And everybody's going to be like, oh my god, I can't believe you made that. It's so hard. And you'll be like, oh yeah, girl, this was nothing. I can totally whip you up one. $40, $50. You know, whatever your price is, just charge what you're worth. And add tax because litter is expensive. And we like nice things, y'all. So we're just going to keep dropping that on and layer over it. Um, Don't forget to drop like a little on the bottom. Like you don't necessarily have to drop it on the bottom. If you just drop it near the bottom of the rim, it'll run over. So I've got all of my colors on. I'm going to mix up a little bit of white. You can also use white alcohol in for this. I just don't have any still. I know it's a terrible thing, but you know, once again, we'll be restraining our shopping habits. 
so y'all should talk to her about that. Comment on down in the comment section and let her know that craft supplies are a necessary part of our budget. It should have its own line in the budget, really. Right next to food and electricity. So I'm just going to mix some regular 99 cent white and acrylic paint into my epoxy and I'm going to stir it up really good. Um, white alcohol ink does spread easier and faster, but I like the depth and the contrast that the actual white paint gives. So I'm just going to spread that on and kind of put it just in little stripes. Not really thick, just kind of string it in on there. I'm not being very precise, although you can if that's just your style, that's just not mine. I'm going to kind of throw it together, girl. I'm going to wait for that to come back around. And you can, you know, wait, let it come back around, wait, let it come back around. So you get a feel of how much you have on there. It's better to do too little than to do too much and have to try and wipe it off and go back. So now I'm going to hit it with my heat gun so that we can try and get some movement on that paint. You can pick this up at Lowe's, you can get one at any home and prove it for. We have smaller ones available at Michael and Joanne. Since this is glass, you don't want to like heat it up a ton. You just want to get enough to get that epoxy going. I'm just kind of hitting it in different spots. You'll see that that glitter is starting to move a little bit. You don't want to get too close or keep it right up on it because the epoxy will burn. It smells terrible. You'll see that that glitter is flowing already. So now that that's going pretty good, I am going to tilt my machine so that it's not so linear and stripey. And I'm going to let it run for a few revolutions. And then I'm going to let this cup spin for about five hours, probably. Four hours, definitely until it's set. I don't know if you guys can see, but the epoxy may drip off a little bit depending on how much you have put on there. That's okay. You know, you don't want a ton of epoxy on there because it's not going to all drip off before it dries. So you just want to do a really thin layer. And you can just tilt the machine as much as you want. You don't have to. Some people take it off and turn it, but once they're on those little foam things, I just tilt the machine. My cord is long enough to do that. And you see it's all moved up this way, but as the cup spins and turns, it will start to shift naturally back down to the other end, or you know, you can stop and turn it this way if you like, so that it starts to flow back the other way. However you want to do it, it just gives it a little bit more movement and um, can I just say I'm loving this I don't know if y'all are loving this but I am definitely loving it so look down you know comment down below let me know what you think so let me know what color combos you'd like to see next what cut projects you have that you're struggling with you know you can pick a cup turner up a uh, cup turner up at Michael's. That's called a spin it. If this is something you think you would be interested in, if you don't already have a cup turner, you can make a cup turner with stuff off Amazon or even stuff at Lowe's. Before I have the model that I have now, I had one that I made with a rotisserie grill from Lowe's. So, 
you can be inventive. There's other methods out there, like the hang dry method that doesn't involve a turner. It does not work as well. I will tell you that off the bat. But if you can't invest right now, which is totally understandable. I had three kids. It took me a while to work up to a turner. Um, that is an option for you also. Okay, now I promise I'm done. So I'm going to go ahead and let this spin, and then in 30 minutes from now, I'm going to come back. I always check my cups. I don't ever just start them and let them spin. I want to make sure that there is no epoxy drips I, or epoxy clumps, and I'm going to take this tape off so that I have a nice defined line and my fit, my top will fit. So that's it for tonight, guys. If you have any questions, let me know below. Subscribe to our page, check out my Etsy shop, and we hope to see you again.